So today we are talking about A26 DAC coming from Gustard. And if you follow my channel regularly, you have probably seen me praising R26 very much because it deserved it. And it's very heavy, so I'm going to put it down here. And A26 is priced similarly. But instead of using R2R network for DA conversion, it actually uses flagship offering from AK a Japanese DAC chip company. And uh, it uses two of these chips for each channel separately. Aside from that, inside of the unit, it uh, Gustard took the same amount of care as they did with R26, meaning two separate transformers for digital and analog section. Then each of these DAC chips is used for one channel and they have separate power supplies too. And the power supply of any hi-fi product is a good tell of how good that product actually is. And uh, this is promising definitely for A26. And if we look in the back, you'll see an Ethernet port, meaning that this DAC, same as R26, has an audio streamer built in. Actually, the more correct phrasing would be audio renderer, but for the sake of everybody easily understanding what I'm talking about, and uh, I, I'm going to call it a streamer. Meaning that you can connect this A26 directly to your home network, and you can stream, cast music from your phone, your PC, or anything that can, can cast either UPnP or Rune, to this DAC. So basically in that case, you do not need to have a PC or any sort of a digital source directly connected to the DAC via USB, optical, coaxial, I squared S and AES EBU, which all of these digital inputs A26 has, but you can just connect it to your network and cast the audio stream like I did from your phone, for example, using an UPnP app like Bubble UPnP that I personally like using. You can also use Rune for that, but Rune is a subscription service. It's pretty nice ecosystem, but it's not cheap. And in my opinion and to my ears, UPnP protocol sounds a little bit better. Don't kill me, Rune users. On the analog uh, output side of things, we have both RCAs, those are single-ended, and XLRs, those are balanced outputs. In the front, you can see that the design language is basically the same as with R26, but there are slight differences. And the biggest of these is probably using touch-sensitive buttons instead of physical ones. I don't particularly like touch-sensitive buttons, but they're okay here because this is a DAC, you do not fiddle with controls all day long, you set it and you should forget it. But there is also remote control, it's probably easier that way if you are sitting in the couch. Everything you can imagine, like extremely high resolution PCMs, DSDs, even MQA unfolding is supported. And if you like using MQA files or streaming services that support it, you, uh, you do get MQA unfolding even on optical and coaxial inputs, not only USB and I2S like some earlier DAX. So I think that whatever you need and whatever, whichever way you would like to use this DAC, Gustard has you covered. But how does that actually sound in real life? Let's find out. So I hooked Gustard A26 into my system and probably the first thing that I've noticed is how breedy and airy the sound is. The soundstage is wide and tall and it simply breathes. There's plenty of empty space and that air around each tone and every instrument, vocal, whatever. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something. But the good thing is that it doesn't sound overly bright or, I don't know, too aggressive in the upper mid-range or, or something like that. So it is very open sounding, but it has smoothness. It, it has that refinement to pull that off without ever being analytical or aggressive sounding. And sure, the, 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 the sound, overall sound being well balanced in terms of tonality, of course, helps with that. 
So mid-range is equally detailed and, and just uh, you can hear every little nouns and every little thing happening in the recording. This is an insanely fast sounding deck and resolving incisive sounding deck. And basically that impression doesn't change when you go to the lowest register. Baseline is a really quick, really informative. It starts and stops on a dime. And the, the bass notes, they also feel like they have really crisp edges and they're well textured. Everything is so clear and crisp and exposed. But that doesn't mean that the bass line of this deck is actually lean sounding or lacking in bass, because it's not. Bass line really hits hard, it has punch, it has like drive that's great, but it's just so well controlled, it starts and stops immediately. Like the deck has full control over every note. It doesn't let it linger in your room. It's just in full control over it at all times. And then moving to the sound stage, I feel that this deck is actually exceptionally good, especially when we talk about width and height. Because there's plenty of room, as I've mentioned previously, and plenty of that empty air, that atmospheric sensation. That there, there's a tone and there is just emptiness and atmosphere around it. And A26 does that great. And it arranges all of the music, all of the instruments and everything in such a wide sound stage. And it also feels tall and airy because of all that high, high frequency information and, and those tiny atmospheric stuff that it can pass through. And that really sounds impressive. In terms of depth, it's quite decent. It's not a flat sounding deck by any means, but it's not a champion in that regard. Like it is when we are talking about just width and tallness and overall widespreadness. I'm just inventing words here, so don't mind me. But you get the gist, I, I, I guess. And that led me to two comparisons with some of my favorite decks. First one was with more affordable, but really great, SMSL SU10 here. This one is below $1,000 slash euros, and it's my current favorite be below 1000 It really sounds good. In a direct comparison, I immediately noticed, first of all, that SU10 here sounds a little bit warmer in the bass and the mid bass. And there's just like that slight warmth to the sound. While A26 is a dead neutral sounding deck, it's as neutral as it, as it gets. Other thing that I've noticed is that A10, while it sounds perfectly precise and wide and lush on its own, cannot fully match just that insane soundstage width of A26. SU10 sounded a little bit more closed in, and it's just not as quick, as nimble, as precise sounding. But once again, on its own, it's a perfectly revealing, incisive, and wide sounding DAC, but A26 simply puts all of that into a little bit higher gear. And it manages to sound even wider, taller, area around notes, and just overally speaking, more grippy, more precise. It has more like way with music, whereas SU10 is a little bit more relaxed and smaller in terms of sound staging. And then the next comparison is with R26 that I'm just going to put here because it's quite weighty and I need to use my hand to explain how something sounds. Weird, right? So if you follow my channel regularly, you probably know that I went nuts after R26. I really liked how bold and just 3D and full it sounds because it's R to R, that's basically my favorite kind of deck. And when I compared them directly, I noticed that R26 has more of that just juice, 
that low end boldness and body to the tone. But it also sounds a little bit closed off in highs and a little bit darker. So I've listened to both of these and I was surprised that I couldn't really find an absolute winner. Because for example, if I would listen to this song, I noticed that A26 sounds faster, it resolves those really quick transients better. It just runs through the song and it never loses the pace. It's, it feels like whatever you throw at this deck, A26, it can resolve it quickly and clearly and move on with it. And in the process, because it's being a little bit more extended in highs, it also sounds touch airier, like there's literally wider, a slightly taller soundstage. R26 counters that with sounding slightly deeper. So yeah, it's a little bit narrower sounding, it's not as airy and expensive around the speakers as A26, but it is a little bit deeper sounding, it feels like it has a darker background and then tones feel slightly more three-dimensional, they have more of that back to front quality, like there's that roundness to your tone and then shading around it, uh, whereas A26 make those tones lighter, airier, maybe even more detail and fast sounding, but slightly flatter sounding too. So for example, in this song, it has that jazzy live club feeling. I'm listening to it these days regularly and it sounds really great through A26. Everything is as it should be. But once I move to R26, that additional sense of body and palpability just sounds so natural in these kind of liveish sounding recordings, jazzy or blues or something like that. And vocals, both male and female, two great vocals in this song, they just sounded more alive and more lifelike and bolder and more present in my room. And in, in this kind of song, I definitely preferred R26. But if you listen to something really fast paced, with many tiny details and transients, something just recorded that way, uh, A26 might as well sound better. So this is a, a, a moment where I tell you that you should and you have to choose for yourself. Because personally, after some time, I still preferred R26 because it suits my taste better. It suits those music genres that I'm listening to better. I like listening to old Elvis songs in the evening and those vocals just sound more lifelike with R26. But I definitely noticed that with many songs, especially fast paced ones, and the, the ones that have plenty of smaller information stuff going around every main tone, those will be revealed more readily, crisply and easily with A26. And they will be packed in a slightly wider, taller, airier soundstage. A26 just spreads that, that air around tones and in the soundstage better. R26 is doing it bolder, more palpable and more 3D-like, but slightly closed and tamer and a little bit slower in terms of pacing and time domain than A26. So yeah, somebody asked me in the comments down below the video just recently, why don't you talk about time domain? I guess I've just explained that in a different, using different words. But yes, if we are talking about time domain precision, that timing, things happening right on the spot, A26 is doing that better. R26 sounds a little bit slower just a little bit laggier 
compared to A26. But it does that with fullness and grace and boldness and the deep art to Irish sound stage that I simply love. So that's why I said to you, I cannot choose a winner here. A26 does some things better. R26 does something better. Strictly technically speaking, I believe that A26 is a more revealing deck. But R26 has more soul. Choosing between these two is really a thing of personal taste and also system matching. Because for example, if the rest of your system has a little bit of fat and sluggishness already, then R26 might not show itself in the best possible light. A26 with its grip, firm control, crazy precise timing and plenty of air might prove to be like a superior deck in that kind of system. On the other hand, if your system is already really fast and analytical sounding, but you do lack a little bit of low body oomph and juice, you just might prefer R26. So be smart. Think about what kind of sound you prefer in your system and where are you at the moment currently and which way do you want to nudge it. Because these are two really fine decks and if you choose the one that suits you and your system better, you can end your, your pursuit for a deck right there. And yeah, that actually le leads me to that audio streamer, which is technically a renderer, but we're, we'll call it a streamer. How does that one sound? It sounds great. It sounds technically as accomplished as anything up to 1000 euros or dollars. I'm talking about audio dedicated audio streamers. I said technically because it does have slight leanness and maybe a little bit analytical sound to it when compared to the best external streamers like iFi Zenstream or Pi2 Design Mercury that I'm personally using. Those do not reveal more details. They're not faster, punchier, more dynamic or anything compared to the internal one in the Gustard but they do have a little bit more natural sound and softness. Just, uh, I don't know, somebody would call that more organic sound, those external streamers. When they are fed with high quality power supply and you use high quality cables and that increases and increases and increases the costs of your whole system. But the difference is really small and the, the integrated ones in both A26 and R26, they work really well, which makes this a streaming deck that, that you can use on its own just with your network and any sort of controlling device that you have. And that makes A26 just like R26 was a great value and such an easy recommendation. And I do think that from the bottom of my heart, these are two fantastic sounding decks. I'm not saying that just so you can go below my video, click on my link, go to the Shenzhen Audio store, buy any of these and help this channel by doing that. But if you do that anyway, it will be much appreciated. So thank you for watching guys and see you next time. Bye.